in the movie Jurassic Park 3. A ferocious new dinosaur overwhelms even the great Tyrannosaurus Rex, and its name was Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus, which was gaining popularity at the time, gradually became known as the king of carnivores, beating out the T-Rex in various films. Ironically, Spinosaurus lived at a different time from the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and both dinosaurs lived in different habitats, so a fight between the two is pure cinematic imagination. However, with its huge body length of 15 meters, long snout like a crocodile's, and its broad, towering sail, spectators were fascinated by its appearance alone. But what did the Spinosaurus use this huge, uncomfortable-looking sail for? And how did we figure out that Spinosaurus lived in water? Today, we're going to go through the many twists and turns of the Spinosaurus story. In 1912, German paleontologist Ernst Struromer discovered a few curious dinosaur fossils in western Egypt. He unearthed a lower jaw, some teeth, vertebrae, and a neural spine sail. In 1915, Ernst, who noticed the unique backbone, named the dinosaur Spinosaurus aegypticus, meaning Egyptian spine lizard. And when Dr. Ernst looked at the conical sharp teeth of the lower jaw of Spinosaurus, he thought it was a theropod carnivorous dinosaur like the T-Rex, and so published this reconstruction. Eh? Isn't this basically a Tyrannosaurus fossil with a sail tacked onto its back? Of course, at the time, there were no complete Spinosaurus skeletons to work with, and the prevailing idea was that dinosaurs dragged their tails on the ground, so the recreation was completely different from what we have today. However, several questions still lingered in Dr. Ernst's mind. Why were the teeth shaped like pointed cones, instead of serrated edges? And what was the role of that huge neural spine sail attached to the vertebrae? And so forth. Dimetrodon also had a long neural spine sail, but it wasn't as thick as Spinosaurus's. With his mind in a storm, lightning struck when Dr. Ernst looked at the bison, which had a high neural spine sail on its shoulder, connected to the neck bone by strong muscles, making the back of the bison's neck protrude like a hump. It's thanks to this attribute that the bison can use its head like a shovel to clear snow. Ernst thought that the Spinosaurus's neural spine sail also played a role in supporting the dinosaur's neck. However, his claim was not accepted as orthodox, because while the bison's neural spine sail protruded only from around the neck, Spinosaurus's spread all over its back. As no Spinosaurus fossils had been discovered for nearly 100 years, no one could really present any counter-arguments. Then, in April 1944, the Bavarian State Museum of Paleontology and Geology in Munich, where all of our Spinosaurus fossils and restorations were being kept, was blown up in an Allied attack during World War II, destroying the only information we had on the creature. While things certainly seemed bleak, thanks to the discovery of new fossils about 40 years later, we began to find some light at the end of this tunnel. The first of these was Baryonyx, excavated in 1986. Baryonyx had conical teeth and a long snout like Spinosaurus, but interestingly, was discovered with fish scales in its stomach. For this reason, Baryonyx was classified as semi-aquatic, followed in 1996 by Irritator in Brazil and by Succamimus in Africa back in 1998. These discoveries prompted paleontologists to speculate that Spinosaurus, which resembled these dinos, also lived in aquatic life. It came as a shock to the academic world that the gigantic theropod, then thought to have only lived on land, could also have been part aquatic. Eventually, paleontologists categorized the previously discovered dinosaur and Spinosaurus as being part of the Spinosauridae family. This established, we began inferring characteristics about Spinosaurus, and some paleontologists suggested that Spinosaurus may have controlled its body temperature using its sail. When Spinosaurus came out of the water and its body temperature dropped, it could have warmed itself with its wide sail. And when its body temperature got too high, it could have circulated blood throughout its sail to cool itself. On the other hand, 
Professor Jack Bailey speculated that their sails were more like energy tanks than thermoregulators, and that Spinosaurus used its sail to store energy sources like fat. However, since no actual fossils of Spinosaurus have been found until then, the questions of whether they really lived in water or used their sails for thermoregulation couldn't be resolved. Then, one 2008 day, in the desert city of Erfoud, Morocco, a fossil collector presented a fateful box of bones to paleontologist Nazir Ibrahim. As luck would have it, that box contained what appeared to be Spinosaurus neural spine sail bones. Ibrahim was then guided by the fossil collector to a strata called the Kem Kem Beds, an area bordering Morocco and Algeria where the fossils were discovered. This place was quite literally Spino Bonanza, chock full of Spinosaurus fossils. Led by Ibrahim, researchers unearthed Spinosaurus hind legs, jaw bones, and several neural spine sail bones from this fossil lair. And in 2014, the research team reconstructed a full Spinosaurus skeleton based on the excavated fossils and published it in the journal Science. This feat was achieved almost 100 years after Spinosaurus's discovery. The reconstructed Spinosaurus was, without a doubt, a semi-aquatic dinosaur. The researchers proposed that Spinosaurus had spent more time in the water than on land, similar to alligators and hippos. And looking at their skulls, it made sense. Their crocodile-like heads were sharp and shaped to catch fish, while their upturned nostrils were perfect for breathing just beneath the water's surface. It had paddle-like forelimbs, suitable for swimming, and its bone density was higher than that of other dinosaurs, perfect for sinking into the water to hunt prey. These surprising discoveries and research results motivated paleontologists to begin exploring other possible functions of Spinosaurus's sail we began to look beyond thermoregulation and into aquatic hunting. Professor Jan, a biophysicist at the University of Rostock in Germany, argued that Spinosaurus not only used its sail to swim quickly just like a sailfish, but also to balance itself when swishing its tail to stun schools of fish. In addition, some have argued that the sail created shade in the water to attract fish. Spinosaurus may also have used its sail for displays of attraction and for alerting other members about danger by controlling its sail's color. Although no concrete theory exists yet, many paleontologists are arguing that, like the feathers on dinosaurs, the sails of Spinosaurus were originally a trait that appeared for a specific purpose, but was later used for a variety of functions. In any case, it is clear that discussions concerning Spinosaurus became more active thanks to the research published by Dr. Ibrahim. And starting in 2014, when the results of his study were published, discussions about Spinosaurus's gait also picked up steam. Before this study was published, it was widely accepted that Spinosaurus had been bipedal like other theropods. But Dr. Ibrahim showed that Spinosaurus may have walked on all fours, judging by its long forelimbs and short hindlimbs, which would have put its center of mass closer to its head. Spinosaurus may have been the first quadrupedal theropod ever discovered. In response to this theory, Dr. Scott Hartman and Dr. Mark Witten showed that Spinosaurus's hind legs may have been longer than expected and that it would have been unreasonable for Spinosaurus to walk on its forelimbs as they faced each other, just like other theropods. There is also fluid dynamical evidence of their bipedalism, so the theory of quadrupedal walking is still up in the air. At the moment, it seems like things are leaning more toward bipedalism for now. But anyway, one thing is for certain, Spinosaurus was a powerful amphibious predator with unique charms that lived during the early Cretaceous period. The rivers stretching from Morocco to Egypt were playgrounds for these proficient swimmers. Avoiding competition for food with other land-trotting dinosaurs was likely a cinch for these debonair dinosaurs. And when they really wanted to have their fill, they likely would have had no trouble climbing onto shore to hunt and explore. I wonder what African riversides looked like 100 million years ago. Maybe exotic species of fish played about in the waters as Spinosaurus walked around beside them. 
It seems quite the serene scene in my imagination. But I guess I'd be shaking in my boots with fear if I were actually in that sort of situation. Sometimes scientific discoveries that, at a glance, may seem trivial, can reveal the identity of dinosaurs that have been shrouded in mystery for over 100 years, and gift us with visions of the world 100 million years past. Imagine that. It's almost like time travel. So too, science is a window to the world. This has been Science Dream. Thanks for sticking with us till the end. <laughs> time for a nap.